In this video, I'm going to talk about some of the differences between the ERC721 and ERC1155 token standards. These are the two most popular token standards for NFTs or non-fungible tokens on Ethereum. So let's take a look at the ERC721 token contract. Here you can see we've got the two main state variables. We've got owners and balances. And for owners, we're just passing an ID for the token. Um, and then it'll provide us with an address. So we've got kind of a key value store here and that's we're passing an ID and it'll give you address of the owner. We can update that when we transfer the NFT from one person to another, for example. Balance is very similar and it goes the other way around. We're providing in the address of a user and it will tell us how many of the tokens that they own. This is a very good example of how the ERC721 token contract is elegantly simple. It's easy to understand. It's no, there's no real complexities in the way the data is stored. It's all very simple. It's easy to manipulate. And if you want to add custom functionality on top of that, it's quite simple to do and kind of get your head around how the contract works. ERC1155 is a little more complex in that the way the data is stored is more similar to like a multi-dimensional array. Because you can have multiple series of NFTs within a single contract here, you actually have an ID for each series. So for example, you might have a thousand swords and a hundred shields and 500 coins all within the same smart contract and each item will have a different ID. And then we can provide an address for that item and it will provide a balance for that item. So a single user might have a balance of three swords, one shield and 20 coins. This has a lot of flexibility as to what you can do with this contract and it adds in this ability to create multiple in-game items which can all be represented as an NFT, for example. If we scroll down in here, you'll see the other difference with this is it actually has support for batch transactions. You can send multiple transfers within a single transaction, which you don't have with ERC721. For developers looking to build out NFT smart contracts, I'd say to stick to ERC721 unless you need that additional functionality that ERC1155 provides. If you need batch transfers or multiple tokens in a single contract, then obviously ERC1155 is the way to go. But there's some value in the elegant simplicity that ERC721 delivers. And for me, I prefer working with that smart contract. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Subscribe to the channel for updates on blockchain development and decentralized finance. And thank you for watching.